have no fear orlando's here pushing pew prosperity is near this video comes from my boy kenny and is talking about how the nba all-star voting crew one thing just one we're gonna get what's the story y'all the, the first round of nba all-star voting, voting came out yesterday, yesterday and i realized, I realized that i was part of the problem. problem so here they are we got lebron james and kevin Durant leading their respective conferences and total votes which is cool because last time we got them as nba captains of the all-star game we got some very very good memes and of course, it was in the midst of the James Harden trade, so that kind of carried it. But still, both of those guys know how to play to a camera. Those are two really good captains. I remember once upon a time, LeBron James was known as like being undefeated in the All-Star game when he was the captain. Draft. I don't know if it's still true today, but if it does, here's another opportunity, LeBron. But there are some very noticeable things when I look at this, like um, Kevon Looney being top 10. Shout out to, shout out to Loon. Also, you got Paolo and Nicholas Claxton, Derrick Rose, Austin Reeves, and Jordan Poole. And the reason I'm pointing them out is because they have big fan bases, um, and they really shouldn't have this many votes compared to some of the people that are snubbed. So when I say I'm part of the problem, I am part of the reason why Demontis Sabonis is not even ranking top 10 amongst front court players, because I personally have never put together a real life battle. This is far as I've ever went, um, tweeting NBA All-Star Kenny Beecham. And, and 500, 500 people retweeting it and 5,000 people like it. Shout out to y'all. Y'all are crazy. But, like, this is the first I've ever been when I was on Cloud9 as a Bulls fan, um, putting Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Fred Van Vliet, Zach Levine again. Yeah, that was good times. Fred Van Vliet. Great. great. We were towards, towards the top of the conference, man. What I would give to go back to those times. But this season, the NBA decided, forget the Twitter thing. We've seen enough. And, and part of it might be because of uh, Bam Bam's tweet last year. So last year, of course, Bam Bam tweeted this. And Bam Bam is one of the biggest K-pop stars in the world. I mean, we're talking 11 and a half million followers. This tweet goes out there. It gets almost 40,000 retweets, 70,000 likes. And then also get the army to go ahead and tweet Andrew Wiggins, NBA All-Star. And in the moment, I, I was like, man, Wiggins don't, don't deserve to be there. Uh, but when you look at the options outside of him, considering how many injuries there were and how good he was performing, he deserved to be there. Shout out to Wiggs, and he was the second best player on the NBA championship team. So shout out to Wiggs. But the NBA decided, I'm not saying specifically because of this, the NBA decided this season, no more tweeting. If you want to put together a ballot or you want to vote for anybody, you got to put out a full 10, you got to go to NBA.com, or you got to use your app, which is just, just, a, just a lot of work. <laughs> so I haven't put together a ballot, but today that changes. And it's understandable that DeMont Sabonis is not top 10, even though he's playing like it. He should have doubted be an all-star, but he's playing in a market like Sacramento that if you're not an NBA sicko or an NBA super fan, you're probably overlooking exactly what the Kings are doing slash what DeMont Sabonis is doing. Especially if you go to the official app and you're just putting together your voting, you're not going to see DeMont Sabonis for some time. You got to really go down. You see De'Aaron Fox, who also should be getting a lot of votes. But you got to go down for some time. Even if I go filter and say Western Conference front court, he's on the third row behind some people that you're used to voting for. Shout out to Larry. Come on, man. I got a lot of love for you. To put up 40 last night, that's just, just we put him in the game. But, like, you're undoubtedly going to vote for these four people. They're up top. They're having good seasons, and they're notable names. And a guy like DeMont Sabonis, even when he was an all-star in Indiana, was kind of like an afterthought. He was like the last man in the game. Today, voting counts times three, so I'm putting together a ballot that will see some of my favorite lowly ranked slash snub players. But then again, we're only voting for starters. And if we're thinking about the starters in the Western Conference. But then again, my little vote for DeMont Sabonis is not about to get him into an all-star game. DeMont Sabonis is not good. We're only voting for the top team. Let's be the honest. rest is voted by, by the coaches. And I think because of that, Sabonis gets in, but we're only voting for the starters. And then based on what I see right now, out west, guaranteed starter lock based on the fan voting, which is 50%, 25% is the players, and 25% is the media. LeBron has the fan voting, he's gonna have the player voting, and he's gonna have the media voting. LeBron James is an absolute lock to be a starter, obviously. Jokic yeah. also absolute lock to be a starter because he's got the fan voting here, because he's gonna have the media. He might be number one on media, and he'll also have the respect of his peers, at least enough to be a starter lock. Steph Curry, Luka Doncic also locks on both fronts. So we're looking for one, one front court player out west to take that spot. And right now it is Anthony Davis based on the fan voting. But Anthony Davis has only played 25 games. And I wonder how the media looks at that. Again, we don't know when he's coming back. Before the All-Star break, he should be back, hopefully. But we don't know how the media is going to look at that. And we don't know how the players around him are going to look at that. 
especially with Zion being right on his tail. Now, Zion is also out with injury, unfortunately. Uh, it's not a, been a not been a great year for injury luck in the NBA. But the, I, I could see a world where Z takes the last starting spot in the front court um, if Anthony Davis is not playing and he doesn't have the respect of the others. Out east, I'm seeing Kevin Durant and Giannis is absolute locks for the same reasons. And I honestly think an absolute lock for the backcourt is done too. I think Kyrie Irving has the fans. He's 1,000% going to have his peers voting. And the media might deduct him because of the stuff that happened earlier in the season. But I think because of the fans, 50%, and the players, other 25%, 75% of the vote is saying Kyrie Irving is number one and number two. So he's going to have a lock. And Donovan Mitchell just had a 71-point game. He's, yeah. he's absolutely a lock, too. So I think there is one spot open out east between Jason Tatum and Joel Embiid. As right now, Joel Embiid has the fan voting by about 100,000, a little bit less than that. And if you look throughout the last previous seasons, Joel Embiid has handled Jason Tatum when it comes to the fan voting. Last year, um, Jared Allen had more votes than Jason Tatum, and Miles Bridges had more votes than Jason Tatum. But things are different this season for Tatum because he's playing at an MVP caliber level, and the Celtics are good. If you remember last year, the Celtics started off so bad, and he was playing good, but when you start off a slightly above 500, you're probably not going to get a lot of the votes. And now things are different. So I wonder what the media and and the players think of that last starting spot. So we're doing all of this voting and we're reacting to these things when in reality, like eight out of the ten spots are locked and guaranteed. So we just voting on the other stuff. We just looking at the fact that the Knicks only have Derrick Rose and be like, what is New York doing? And honestly, the Derrick Rose uh, votes aren't just coming from Knicks fans. <laughs> I know plenty of Bulls fans that's putting Derrick Rose in their ballot. I know Timberwolves fans that are putting Derrick Rose in their ballot, and then he's got the entire market overseas, too. So that's why Derrick Rose is top 10. But, like, Jalen Brunson might not make the actual game, but he's been playing all-star caliber. And Julius Randle's relationship with Knicks fans is kind of crazy. A couple years ago, he was in the All-NBA, and then the year after that, he's just in the crowd and yada, yada, yada. This year, he's playing at an all-star caliber level. But the fact that he has less votes that Nicholas Claxton, who's just over the bridge of him, is insane to me. Nicholas Claxton's fan base, whether it be the Brooklyn Nets or just his individual stands, should be outweighed by Julius Randle by a thousand, considering he's playing in the bigger on the bigger team in the bigger market, and he has been an all-star before. So it's insane to me that he hasn't even cracked top ten. Not really matter because he's not gonna look, be looked at as a star anyway. So should it matter if he's top ten or not? It doesn't. It really doesn't. Shout out to the um, the Warriors fans. I mean, they they do not play. <laughs> the boys do not play. They gonna vote their guys in. I'm su I'm surprised when I see Dante Divincenzo in the top ten. I wouldn't be surprised if he's number twelve. That, I'll say that. I wouldn't be surprised if Divincenzo is number twelve because they vote and they vote daily. What did P Diddy say? Uh, vote or die. Uh, that, 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 shout out to Diddy. If you want to see your guy be a starter, you gotta vote or you're not gonna get there. Uh, leave a like or subscribe. But you can do both. Oh, Tatum. Listen, guys, I'm not trying to see Jordan Beat start over Tatum. The fact that. The fact that Katie is getting votes over Tatum pisses me off when the fact of the matter is Katie needed Stephen Curry in the woods to win that ring. And whenever Tatum sees. The Nets, you already know what happens. Get my boy Brown, one more voting. Brown and Tatum in together at the same time for the East is trouble. You're going to have the best two duos playing in the All-Star game. And then not expect them to go off. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. Kyrie better be starting in for the East because I don't want to see the East lose this one. We can't lose this one. Katie and Kyrie and Giannis against the old LeBron, Curry, Luka, and then the 80s injured. There's so much things to consider. This this is gonna be a good All Star game. It's gonna be entertaining. I expect Luca to go off. 
I expect Trey Young to have some fucking half courts, carry half courts. John Moran's gonna get some minutes, and I wanna see John Moran dunk on somebody.